Waikiki Beach is one of the most popular tourist attractions on the island of Oahu, located on the south shore of Honolulu. Its beautiful sunsets, crystal clear blue water, and warm tan sands are what make this beach so magical. A walk down Waikiki Beach is a walk to remember. Feeling the cool water rush upon your feet, the grainy sand rubbing between your toes, and the fresh ocean aroma filling your nose. Each step one takes is a step that will forever be imprinted in one's mind. As you can see, people love being on the beach, whether they are sunbathing, surfing, snorkeling, or merely strolling. Everything on shore is peaceful, but little do people know that there is something growing uncontrollably in the water, something big, and something that will forever change the fate of the coral reefs. Gorilla Ogo. Gorilla Ogo, or known as Gristillaria silicornia, is a type of seaweed, or limu, that was introduced to multiple sites in Hawaii by Philippine ships. The main reason it was brought to Hawaii was to harvest it for food in agar, which is a type of jelly. The three main islands in which the Gorilla Ogo is found are Oahu, Molokai, and the Big Islands. The Gorilla Ogo is a threat to biodiversity because it is rapidly growing around the shallow coral reefs, causing the reefs to die and the fish inhabiting them as well. By the Gorilla Ogo growing on the tops of the coral reefs, it stops the reefs and the fish from getting their nutrients. The way in which coral reefs get their nutrients is by a process known as photosynthesis. Many of us are familiar with this term from how plants get their nutrients. The reefs contain a photosynthetic algae, known as zooxanthellae, that lives within their tissues. The corals and algae have a mutual relationship. The coral provides the algae with a protected environment and compounds they need for photosynthesis. For the coral, the algae produces oxygen and helps the coral to remove wastes. The most important thing the zooxanthellae does is supply the coral reefs with glucose, glycerol, and amino acids, which are products of photosynthesis. There are many types of fish that live within the coral reefs and needs them in order to survive. An example of these fish are the long-nosed butterfly, toadfish, threadfin butterfly, and yellow tang. The coral reefs supports the complex food web and not only supports the large diversity of fish, but also the marine crustaceans, the reptiles, and the mammals. As much as the coral reefs are important to the fish, the fish are also important to the coral reef. For example, the spotlight parrotfish removes the unwanted algae growth from them, and since the algae competes with the coral reef for both sunlight and nutrients, it helps the coral reef out. There, if there's a loss in the coral reefs, there will be a loss in fish, which would affect the fishing industry. And if there's an effect in the fishing industry, this would affect how much revenue that Hawaii makes. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, it states that the fish that grow and live on the coral reefs are a significant food source for over a billion people around the world. 85% of these people rely primarily on these fish for a source of nutrients. The growth pattern of the Gorilla Ogo is irregular, continuous, and overlapping causing dense layers to overgrow on the reefs as it inhabits and destroys the coral and other seaweeds, therefore allowing the Gorilla Ogo to outcompete various aquatic organisms because it prevents the other algae and aquatic plants from attaching itself to the reefs and growing. When this happens, the food web is disrupted, and because the Gorilla Ogo is not the preferred food for the fish, this ultimately endangers the native fish population, causing it to decline. Also, the Gorilla Ogo greatly affects 
the Hawaii's tourism industry and the amount of money that goes into the state. In addition, Hawaii spends millions of dollars annually maintaining and removing this particular invasive species. According to Professor Stefan Bullard, a marine biologist and professor at the University of Hartford, the gorilla ogo originated from the Indian Ocean and made its way to the South Pacific. The gorilla ogo is able to survive more in the South Pacific rather than the Indian Ocean because of some issues it may have experienced there. It may have experienced a disease of some sort, or a predator that gave it no other choice but to move away. When the Philippine ships brought it here, it survived and thrived so well because there was no other threat to it, which is one aspect to invasive species that make them thrive so much in Hawaii. When it reached Hawaii, it began to have a massive population growth because of its asexual ability to reproduce. Asexual reproduction occurs by one piece of the gorilla ogo floating off and landing on another part of the coral reefs and reproducing all on its own without the help of another piece of itself. An interview conducted by Helen, a student at the University of Hartford, with Professor Bullard, discusses the issue of erosion. It says that coral reef stops erosion from happening under the ocean, and how, like, what happens when under the ocean erodes? Like, what would happen? It's talking about a couple of things, because coral reefs do protect, not sort of necessarily underneath the ocean, but the shoreline. And you've probably seen looking out of the hotel, you just have a reef outside, the, the waves are breaking on the reef, and then it gets kind of quiet, and comes into the nice quiet beach. Well, what happens if you get rid of the coral reefs, well, then the waves come right in, they break on the beach, and they can actually take the sand away, and that causes erosion. So if you have coral reefs, if they're being killed by, say, this algae, they may not be there, they may not be able to stop the waves from coming in, and you might actually get beach erosion as a result. And what happens if there's beach erosion? <coughs> That's a real problem, because it, it does various things. It affects both the ecology and the economy of the place. Here, you don't want beach erosion because the tourists are coming to sit on the beach. So the beach is gone, you probably have to pay a huge amount of money to get it back. You pump sand back on so it grows there. In terms of the ecology, as the sand moves away, it goes to new places. It can smother other coral reefs, it can damage other habitats. So it's really bad. You want to make sure everything stays more or less where it is if you can. With Gorilla Ogo growing at tremendous speeds, we can only do and try so much to keep it under control. Hawaii spends millions of dollars a year in helping clean the beaches of Gorilla Ogo, mainly because it affects the tourism industry, which is Hawaii's main source of income. With the beaches covered in Gorilla Ogo, it makes it look unattractive, causing the tourism to go down. A way in which marine biologists and others collect and dispose of Gorilla Ogo is an invention known as a super sucker. The super sucker does exactly what it sounds like. It sucks everything up. Everything meaning not only Gorilla Ogo, but native species that live within the coral reef as well. <clears throat> the most common and beneficial way of removing the seaweed is manually, but it is not the most efficient way because it is very time consuming. While at the Marine Biology Institute, our honors class have an amazing opportunity to experience how time consuming picking through Gorilla Ogo is. Piece by piece we picked. It was mind-blowing how many organisms we found embedded in the Gorilla Ogo. Tons of seaweed is taken out of the ocean, but the main problem is finding a place to put it all. At first, people were throwing the Gorilla Ogo deeper into sea, but that strategy was a failure because it eventually made its way back to shore. A second way Gorilla Ogo is disposed of is by selling it to China, where they use it as fertilizer. And the last and most common way of throwing away Gorilla Ogo is into landfills. As you can see, Gorilla Ogo is a fast-growing problem in Hawaii. Hawaii is a place everyone should have the amazing opportunity to visit and experience its marine life, like we did on our Hillier Honors trip, a trip that will never be forgotten. If you want to help save Hawaii's beaches from this fast-growing invasive seaweed, please visit marumanalua.org and make a donation today. Every dollar counts.